After that paper 4 exam, it has become even more necessary to score a high mark in your IDCSE Biology paper 6 exam. This exam paper from 2022 is considered among the hardest exams. That's why I'm solving it in this video and I'm including all the tips to solve and score a high grade in your upcoming paper 6 exam. You may watch this video now or save it so you can watch it before your exam. As always, the very first thing you do with paper 6 is you scan to find this line where they tell you what are they going to change? Surface area. And what are they going to measure? They're measuring here rate of diffusion because that's going to be your independent and that's going to be your dependent variable. So what are they doing here? They took some cubes. They made them from a substance called agar gel and they soak those tubes into an acid and they put indicator inside those cubes. Like the cubes are different sizes. Some of them are big, some of them are small. And as I told you, there is acid outside the cubes, like hydrochloric, and the cube itself has indicator inside. They are having a stopwatch and they're measuring how long it takes for the indicator inside the cube to change its color. So it's something like this. So they poured acid onto those jelly cubes and they timed how long it takes for the indicator inside the cube to change its color. They found that the smaller tubes change the color faster. Here is the results. So we have cubes and that is the largest of the cubes and that is the smallest of those cubes. And look what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to turn the info here. They wanted you to turn it into tables. And as always, the left column of your table is the independent, whatever you have been given. And the right column is what we're measuring. So here I'm going to write block. And here I'm going to write the time it takes to change its color. They wanted me to convert all the data here into seconds. Even without them telling you, you must convert into one unit. You can't have minute and second in same column. So I'm writing the block name A, B, C, and D. And then I'm going to just take this, say six times 60 plus 56, three times 60, 180 plus two, 182, 60 plus 54 and 60 plus 24 and so on. So just write them here in second. Okay. So it's clearly here shows that the cubes that are small are changing their color faster. State a conclusion for the result. And as always, I tell you, like make the conclusion one line, very straightforward. I can say the bigger the cube, the less time it takes for it to change its color. You want to be like more specific. The bigger the tube, the slower the rate of diffusion. Okay. So going back to the variable state, the variable that the student measured, dependence. So what did he measure? He measured the time it takes to change the color of the cube. State variable that the student changed the independence. So what did he change? He cut the cubes of different size. Okay. Or you can specify the surface area. Tell them like surface area is big, surface area is small. When did he keep constant? Again, for this one, it's super easy. Just find any number and the unit, like volume, concentration of the acid, they were both controlled. Or maybe the chemical, like they've used one type of indicator. All these count as controlled variables. So again, control variables, check if they specified one temperature, that's good. Check if there is any chemical like the acid I found. Volume, concentration, they all count. So me, I'm writing type, volume, acid, okay? And the indicator. So just one way of improving the method of the investigation. What are possible improvements? Look, first, and the easiest you can write is improvements, repeats. 
If they, didn't, if they did the experiment one time, tell them you must repeat. Check temperature. Like first time we said, if they control it, they say it's a control. And most of the times, intentionally, they're not going to control temperature. So you tell them you should have controlled the temperature. Plus equipment, meaning they've used, they did not use a measuring cylinder. They just used like silly way of measuring volumes. And again, something very common, if you have a change in color, it's very difficult to judge colors only with your eyes. So we usually use colorimeter. Again, this is like magic list here. It would help you in all those experiments whenever they ask you for improvements. So me here, I'm telling them, you must have repeated. You could have controlled temperature. Here, thermostatically controlled water, bath and color, or you could put a white background, well, like you put white background behind the color. It helps you to judge the color in a better way. How could step two be carried out safely? What step two is all about? Step two, student use the ruler and the knife to measure and cut. So cutting is, has some safety issues. Cutting, you could use a cutting, you know that cutting board you have in your kitchen where you cut your vegetables, that could be useful. Or you could just cut away from self, meaning nobody should cut like this, right? Cut away. All right. Then they asked me for this simple calculation. They said, find the surface area to volume. Easy. Just say 2.5 divided by 0 0.25. And then what's going to be, now we're going to have it as a ratio. I'm going to divide 0 0.25 over itself. That's a one and 2.5, I should say here over 0 0.5. So meaning we find in the simplest ratio of those two numbers. So it's going to be one to 10 or 10 to one, I should say. Okay. The drawing. So it's not the easiest of drawings. How am I supposed to get this one? Right? Look, first thing, as I always trace it while tracing, don't waste time, just tracing count the features. So while I'm walking my pencil onto that thing, I should be counting the spines it has here and repeat down here. So I've just got that hold of that tail it has. I'm just going to walk like this thing, keeping the same count. Okay. You get till here again, this should be shown. If you're drawing it right now, send it to me. So I can tell you what things you can improve about your drawings. So that's mine here. P to Q with your ruler millimeters. So P to Q all that length. And then they said, find me. The actual is always the image, which is 130 divided by magnification. How much is the magnification? Look at it. 150. Okay. This becomes like this. Three decimal places. Food test is a must in every single paper six exam. We have sometimes one question, sometimes two questions. Mine here, they wanted me to find the, to identify proteins. So with proteins, I'm going to do the Byrit test. Byrit test. You add drops, no heating. And if there is any protein, you would expect violet purple color to show. So I'm going to state the name of the indicator, one mark. And then I tell them the color is the second mark. Now comes the six marks question for the investigation. What do you must do here? Step one, identify independent variable because they're going to change it. So once again, the independent variable is going to change. Last time, it was the surface area, the size of the cubes. This time, they said plan investigation effect of temperature this time on an enzyme. Now they are giving me films like the one I have here. So you have been given a film like this one here. And this film has been coated with gelatin. Like gelatin is a protein. Okay. So what do they want me to do? They wanted me to find how long it takes or what's the best temperature to digest that protein we have in this film. So again, you have a film, 
like this. They coated this with protein called gelatin. And you are to find the best temperature to digest that protein using a protease. How do you find when is this like protein has been digested? The film will go from this cut to being transparent. Okay. So once again, to start with, I always like to brainstorm. What am I going to change? Temperature. What am I going to measure? How long it takes for the film to become transparent. What am I going to control? Do you remember what they've changed in their experiment? They changed like the size. I'm going to keep the size the same. So all of my films, I'm going to take like several one of these and they're all the same size. All right. It's an enzyme. We have we are changing the temperature. So what else does affect enzyme reactions? So what other factors do affect enzyme reactions? pH maybe, right? This, the volume of the enzyme, the concentration of the enzyme. So all these matter when it comes to enzymes. Once again, take a look at the at top. Several temperatures. Each one of them has specific volume and enzyme and specific amount of what is that buffer what's the ph buffer is what's to make or to keep the ph constant like ph changes during the reaction you make an amino acids when you break down protein make amino acids so the ph will change you don't want this to happen so you add some substance to maintain constant ph we call it buffer right and you can see here that I've put te two test tubes. Where do I have two test tubes? One will be for my enzyme protease, and one will be for the substrate protein. I'll wait five minutes. We call this five minutes of waiting equilibration. Why is it necessary? It's necessary because I want the enzyme and the substrate to have equal temperature to absorb the temperature of the surrounding. If I have the scan was cold at the beginning of the lesson, now it's room temperature. So it has equilibrated with the room temperature. I need this five minutes here before I start the reaction for both to have the same temperature. So prepare, don't say water bath only, thermostatically controlled water bath, place enzyme and substrate separately. My substrate is the film coated with gel, right? Now I'm going to control pH five minutes to equilibrate and then I'll find how long it takes for the fill to become clear. How do I tell if it's clear or not? Maybe I could put text behind or I put it in the light and see if the light is passing through. Okay. Then I repeat five times at 20 and I repeat at the other temperatures. Note that I could write a safety. It's always worth writing one step for safety because it's necessary. I may write it and score a mark. I may not write it and lose a mark. So just write it even without them mentioning any reason for safety. Okay. Does that make sense? Or shall I repeat it? Sir, could you please repeat it? Which part? The last part. Like I don't understand why you chose 10, 30, 40, and 50. You can choose any range of temperatures. So you just need to vary that temperature. And the has to be minimum number. Interval. Yeah. So interval of temperatures and minimum is like five. Greater temperatures, better. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. State two pieces of apparatus other than safety committee required to carry out this method. You need to heat water until it boils and you need measure the mass of cabbage. So heating, I need like some electric heater or a buns and burn. Measure the mass, I need a balance. Quick here, I can tell what the independent and the dependent, right? From the table. We're changing this, we're measuring that. Graph, they want me plot a line graph, meaning point to point with your ruler. So. First thing, I should always copy the headings. That's one mark. Even if we're running out of time, just copy the headings, you get one mark. So copy the headings and then divide your X, the X axis. And then 
the y-axis, its range, my y-axis has a small range here. It's ranging from 10 to 40, okay? So I'm just going to divide the y-axis 10 to 40. Fives is good, I think, yeah, or 10. Yeah, 10 to 40. I did not include zero because I don't have any value below 10. Okay? And I put a line like this, stating what? Stating that the X has a different origin than the Y. Okay. Now the graph parts, what am I supposed? I'm just going to plot these zero and 34. It's going to go like this, five and 31, 10 and 26. And then I just join them with my rule. It has to be done with your ruler. Now find calculate percentage decrease of vitamin C. So I am going to take the initial, final, subtract, okay? Divide by the initial value, starting value, times 100 to get two significant figures. And you can see how food tests are important because once again, they asked me about another food test, vitamin C. Like vitamin C, we use a special indicator called DCPIP, okay? And the color change this time, it's blue to colorless. So if I'm adding the juice onto the indicator, it's going to change its color from blue to colorless. So for tomorrow, please prepare for tomorrow's test. Plus spend time tomorrow after class to solve the remaining two papers. So I'm going to send you four past papers. We already did two. You will do the remaining two other papers. Okay. I'll now let you go.